This is Dr. Victor Vernon Wolf. The subject of this dissertation is a holodynamic framework for construction of reality and its applications within the field of psychotherapy. The discoveries of various branches of science in the last few decades gives prima facie evidence that this universe is made of dynamic, interacting spinners of information emanating from hyperspace. We are part of a holographic, multidimensional, conscious field in which everyone, everything, and every when are interconnected within fractal phase conjugation patterns that appear to be universal throughout nature. The entire field is evolving in individuated forms according to three basic processes, linear, wave, and creative linear, wave, and creative. All life, including us humans, evolve within this field according to an implicate or built-in order. Human behavior, both personal and collective, operate within one whole dynamic, a holodynamic field that is open to therapeutic input that includes direct access to information sets within the microtubules of the cells. Therapeutic input activates the transformation of holodynes. These are self-organizing information sets that control our thoughts, feelings, and behavior, both inside and outside the confines of our space-time continuum. The application of this information gets extraordinary results in overcoming things like drug abuse, and mental illness, and criminal behaviors, and relationship conflicts, and in even transforming corporate cultures and government systems. I'd like to thank Luba Haklova and the other holodynamic psychologists who make possible this presentation. It's an honor to be present here. There's a science behind everything I'm saying. It's taken us decades to be able to develop the language that's effective in psychotherapy. Now, so far, we've written 15 different books about this subject and develop different courses, both online and on site, and a number of programs, and we're working on projects. So holodynamic psychology is spreading worldwide. You can see this information on our website at www.holodynamics.com, and we invite you to investigate what we've been doing. <coughs> so this is me. And my question to you is, you believe what? And guess what? Psychotherapy can be, can be extreme fun. Sponsored by the International Academy of Holodynamics. You can find us again at holodynamics.com. And here's the book that contains these treatises, and this is only seven of them. But basically, it's a manifesto because it's, if you want to do psychotherapy, then you should be involved on the leading edge of the information and here's 95 treatises about that information from science that applies directly to psychotherapy. It's about holodynamics, the whole dynamic. From holo meaning whole, and dynamics meaning force in action. So it's basically the whole force in action. And therapy used to be, according to the Greeks, a return to God, which then became a return to wholeness, and now has evolved into to improve the quality of consciousness. And there's an R factor. Now, R stands for reality, but basically, if you take Bakarovsky's, for instance, the raspberry experiment, he took a holographic image of a raspberry that was healthy and living and then projected it onto one that was dying and tumored, and it healed the dying raspberry. I call this the R factor. So psychotherapy should include this R factor, the reality factor. You heard what happened when the Pope died. Yeah, St. Peter met him at the gate, and all the angels were celebrating. They asked if they could do anything for him, and he said, yeah, I want to see your archives. Well, so Peter says, you know, we've got the best archives in the universe. So he sent him down there, and he was in there for quite a while, and suddenly the hallowed halls of heaven echoed with his, oh, no, the great agonist moaning, there's an R, there's an R, oh, no. You all rest down, what is it, what is it? Is, look, it's not celebrate, it's celebrate. So sometimes therapy is like that. You just have to remember there's an R. 
there's an R factor, and the R factor in psychotherapy is a holographic projection of the potential of any information set manifests that potential in this space-time continuum. In other words, if you know who the real being is that you're working with or the system's being, to manifest the potential and thus to improve the quality of consciousness, that's the goal of the psychotherapy and there is a built-in order to that. So the science of psychotherapy deals with these kinds of principles. The universe is holodynamic. Whether you believe it or not, the whole, it's whole, one whole dynamic. Reality is one whole dynamic. The universe is also multidimensional. I would take Paul Townsend's work at Cambridge University in England. He says there are at least 10 dimensions. And humans are only conscious of three or maybe four. Now you know why we have so many problems, because some of the problems are caused by some of those enfolded dimensions. What's a multi-dimension mean? Well, a dimension is a measurable event. And there are at least ten different dimensions to reality. And since we're only aware of three or maybe four, Yet 97% of reality is enfolded or hidden from our normal view in this world. So why should we be impressed? Because therapy takes place when it's real therapy in multiple dimensions. Now just bear with me on this, because some of this may be new, but most of you already know all this. So I'm really talking here to the other guys the ones who don't know this yet. But everything is made of information and emotion. How do we know? Because of the cyclotrons and things like that. There's all kinds of evidence for this coming out of science. We've learned more in the last few years than the entire knowledge gained by the human race. We've doubled our knowledge in the last 10 years. Furthermore, it's predicted if we keep going at the rate we're going, we will double it again in the next five years or two years, or one year, it's increasing. And here's what we're doing. We're living in, we found out we're living in multiple holergies. So you take them from the, on the right hand bottom of this, from hyperspace to the quantum field, to the holodynes inside your microtubules, to the neurons, to the body organs, the body itself, to your personality, to your relationships, to your profession, to right through to your family, your community, your nation, and the world. They're all integrated in one great holergy of information. And all of it's about self negotiation for self-interest, everything interacting and improving the quality of consciousness of the entire field. Now, when you talk about the entire field, that means you have to go into hyperspace because hyperspace is the source of all this information. When the cyclotrons show that when you break the little particles up to see what's the smallest part, they found it is not a particle at all. It's a information spinner and it's emanating from hyperspace. So you are a projection from hyperspace. And the real you that is the basic source of your form and your body and everything happening in your life is, is a projection from a more complex space, hyperspace beyond the range of your senses. It's non-local. So if you want to do psychotherapy, you must have access to non-locality, and thus hyperspace and psychotherapy are connected. Not only that, but it's outside the confines of time. Hyperspace is not bounded by the same time constraints that we have. There are different time loops here. Basically, according to Stephen Hawking, time and light are inseparably connected, and light bends and therefore time also bends, so he bends it. And here's a picture out of his book, The Universe in a Nutshell, showing the bending of time. And we're in this little choo-choo train going along here on, looks like, you know, from the past into the future. But in reality, when you bend time, the past and the future are all running in parallel. Here's the other key in psychotherapy. We can access the past and the future. We can access the past and the future. Hyperspace is beyond the confines of space and time. So when you access hyperspace, you access all time and all space, past, present, and the future. 
Now, how do we do that? Because your full potential self, your hyperspatial counterpart, what Roger Penrose calls it, can access the past and the change and change therefore the patterns you inherited or had modeled for you. You can access all those holodynes inside your microtubules. You find them, you access them, and then they give you the information from the past, and we can also go into the future and bring back solutions to problems. Now this may sound theoretical to you, but it works. It gets extraordinary results. So psychotherapy is about integrating the past and the future into the present. How do we do that? Because you realize that reality is holographic. Now what's holographic? It's to manifest a more complex dimension in a less complex dimension, like a three-dimensional image, holographic image, can be put onto a two-dimensional page and you can still see the three dimensions. So hyperspace is considered more complex than space. So hyperspace is projecting itself here onto this space-time continuum. And here's how it works. The universe is quantum. Every part of it is connected to every other part. How do we know that? Well, because in quantum physics, from this view, everything is made of information in motion and is being projected from hyperspace. We live in a conscious universe. The quantum field in physics, for instance, becomes physical reality. The implicate or built-in order becomes explicate. It's manifest here. Everything grows according to an implicate order, including human consciousness. The unformed becomes informed, and any potential becomes a pattern. So, if it's a pattern, it's made of information. There's also an implicate order, and this is extremely important in holodynamic psychotherapy. It's a life manifests according to an order. All information sets manifest according to a built-in order. All plants grow according to that order. If you put the order for growth of plants on a computer, the computer grows the plants in exactly the same order that nature manifests. It's all digitized information systems in multiple dimensions. So we spent several years researching everything known from psychology and education and religion and physics and chemistry and sociology and, and I'm a developmental psychologist and so I specialized to find if I could find how consciousness emerges according to a developmental pattern. Piaget, Kohlberg and all the other developmentals are involved in this chart. And at the center of the chart is choice. And you can updraft your information or you can downdraft it. Updrafting leads to more energy and more life. And downdrafting leads to less energy and more entropy and death. And I could take a, a, several days and go through how all this works, but it's found in the books. This one's in the book, Holodynamics. So if you want this, you can find the details of it. And, and figure out how it works. People all over the world are using this because it's the best rendition of the implicate order of consciousness and how it emerges that I've ever been able to find. Of course, I created it, so I'm biased, so anyway, it's a lot of fun doing this. Consciousness also processes, processes as a way to manage itself in three ways. One of them is the thinker, the logical, the sequential, the rational process, it's particle physics classical physics, it's mathematics, all those things are all done according to this li linear logical sequence. There's another one though, about 105 years ago, uh, Neil Bohr came along and he said, well, we can't explain using logical sequential physics how things hold together. And so maybe it's a harmonic. And so he developed a quanta, a quantum measurement of wave dynamics. It became known as quantum mechanics. And pretty soon everybody became a quantum mechanic. But anyway, it's about harmonics. It's about energy. And emotional dynamics are based on that same principle. Your conscious system processes things quantumly in wave dynamics, and they're called emotions. So you have the logical thinker, and then you have the feeler. But you also have a beer. So the being is the presence of creative 
embraceive dynamics. It's like the who you really are. Manifesting here using linear and wave dynamics, but being present in the creative intelligence of imagination and everything else that goes with it. So we did a topology on this. And if you take a look at the line that goes from the right corner down to the left corner, across this whole square, this cube, then above the line are your rational processes and below it are your intuitive wave processes. And the whole thing is, your, the whole thing is one whole dynamic. The big red wave there is your interest wave because on the plane where the wave intersects there is, are your holodynes and this is the game in the brain is mainly on that plane. The blue area are the overlap between your family and culture belief systems called comfort zone thinking. And all of this is going on continually at different levels of development. So the, the little sections that are the six sections there's divided into are the six stages of development. So holodynes are active within every one of these dimensions. And you can change this topology as just a mathematical representation, so the shape doesn't mean anything. You can change the shape, but the functions always remain the same. So this is just an easy way to keep track of everything. And if you look at this, you can see that self-knowledge and self-maintenance and self-negotiation of your own self-interests are all in the central function of every living form. However, it's broader than we think it is, because if you take a look at the five trillion life forms inside your body, you realize they're all coordinating what they're doing. So when you want to lift your left arm, you do that. You don't lift your left leg or your right leg or something else. Your body does what your mind is telling it to do. Even your DNA reorganizes in response to internal and external pressures. So it's dynamic. So is an entire system. And right now, the systems of the world are in tremendous transition. Every person individually is responsible for this because we're all in transition personally. And this is where psychotherapy becomes very instrumental because every person has a hyperspatial counterpart what we call your full potential self because everything is driven by potential. That's David Bohm's work in Science and the Implicate Order. But your relationship with your full potential self is a one-to-one -one relationship. It's not something abstract and up there way gone and beyond. It's real and it's here. And it's there at the same time. Stephen Hawking puts it this way. If you take this three-dimensional image floating in hyperspace, it's projecting itself onto this two-dimensional image called physical reality. But reality is multiple dimension and physical reality is only three dimensions. So the complex is projecting itself here into this world, into this space-time continuum. That's what it's called. And this is the universe in a nutshell. This is his conclusion as to what physics and reality is all about. And it is central to psychotherapy because the full potential self has all the answers and they're readily available. The full potential self in reality is projecting itself into the information systems within your microtubules and all your holodynes. This reflects itself into the organs and the body and the personality and the family and relationships and it, all these more complex information systems is one whole dynamic system, a field of consciousness. Now you can use your full potential self. You just stay in contact every day, commit to communicate, come and support each other, unfold your potential together. You take action together. You do everything on a principal basis. You embrace reality because in reality, the purpose of you being here is to manifest the potential of your own full potential self. This is a revolutionary, revolutionary work. So the full potential self is hyperspatial and spatial at the same time. And it holds the keys to psychotherapy. So what blocks you from unfolding your potential or what blocks us all? It's your holodynes, these wonderful information systems that are inside of our microtubules.
So you can take this and say, okay, they're all inside there. Now uh, what's happening? They have the power to cause. Their information system, it means holodyne means whole, and dyne means a unit of power. It's a whole unit of power. They have the power to cause. They're living information systems. They're self-organizing. They're self-perpetuating. They're stored in the microtubules of the cells. Wow, when you learn that, you learn that they also have an implicate order of growth. We're programmed, and our job is to have an opportunity to change our program. And each problem we have is an invitation to manifest our full potential and the full potential of the problem, the holodyne. Here's a part of the picture by John Luke who shows the holodynes inside your microtubules as holographic images that are stored at different angles within the microtubules. It's just like a hologram. You can put any number of holographic images on a holographic plate simply by changing the angle at which it's entered. A similar thing goes here with the Gaborian transform inside your microtubules. What are microtubules? Well, let's talk about this for a while because microtubules are mechanisms of consciousness. We know that. They create mitosis, cell division. You can watch films on this on the Internet. They are in charge of your biochemistry. They can reach in with their little arms. They're microtubule-associated protein strings called MAPs, microtubule-associated protein strings. They reach in and they can actually take chemistry, the minerals you need or nutrients or whatever, out of your bloodstream and pass it to exactly where it's needed in your organs or your body. They're totally in charge of your neural processes. They maintain your body coherence. They're collective and they actually are part of the field of collective consciousness. That's why one person can make a difference in the field of the collective. Sorry about that. I forgot to turn myself on off. <laughs> anyway, you can get then the use of the, the, these um, microtubules use quantum and holographic processes, and that's where the, they contain the holodynes. They're all in your microtubules. Here's a picture of a microtubule. You can see the cell and the neuron, and um, you can see that along the axioms of the neurons are the microtubules in these little green stripes here. And if you amplify those, you see the green. Uh, tubes, and you see the little arms, the microtubule associated protein strings, and you see that they can move things along. But the information systems are contained inside these microtubules. There's an electron microscopic uh, photograph of them. They look like trees with branches. Well, the branches are the little microtubule associated protein strings, and the trees are the microtubules. And uh, they web themselves over all cells, and all living creatures have microtubules, and all living creatures have holodynes. So they're about memory storage, they're information exchange, they control your sensory perception, and they also control your, pers your personal feelings and thoughts and actions. They f control your sensory perceptions because all of your senses are covered with holographic screens. You have fine grain screens and gross grain screens. The fine grain screens pick up the details. They're like the fovea of the eye is covered with fine grain screens, and it, if you destroy the fovea, you can't read the letters on a page. But the gross grain screens give you the whole context of things. They give you the whole picture. So they're the reference wave in a hologram, and the fovea and the fine grain screens and that kind of thing are the information waves that come out, and they use a Gaborian type of transform that actually transforms the information into holographic images and stores it in your microtubules as, holograph as holograms or holodynes. So they control your, your whole body system, and also they communicate collectively, so you put your input into the collective field. They also control systems dynamics, and they grow according to an implicate order, and that's the key to psychotherapy. It's the same implicate order we've talked about a few minutes ago. You want, to, you want to study this. This is in the book called Dynamics, and then it's amplified in each of the other books, The Dance of Life and the others. Now, why am I saying all this? I'm saying all this because the results are extraordinary. You can resolve personal issues, and family dynamics, and systems dysfunctions, and it doesn't take long. 
We were able to stop illegal drug pushing in six cities in Utah. We emptied out more than 80% of the state mental hospital until we were stopped because they, they, they get paid by the beds they keep full, which is like, you know, insanity. But anyway, transformation of maximum security prisoners. I just have all kinds of stories. I'd love to tell you about that, how you can actually get into the holodynes that are causing the criminal behavior. And by transforming the holodynes, all the states of being of the person change. You know, rehabilitation of juvenile delinquents and gangs in the streets like a ballet. We help create major transitions in corporate cultures like Boeing and Bank of America and Toyota and Blue Sky Software and all those kinds of, we transformed the corporate culture. And the results were amazing. We also were instrumental in ending the Cold War. This took nine years. That was a nine-year project that I was involved in. And, uh, you know, we had such tremendous success. I'm a member of the Academy of Natural Science of Russia and received their highest award for contributions to science and society in that transformation. Then we're also involved in systematic, uh, systemic transformation of like terrorism in the Middle East. And in the Dance of Life, on the last chapter, we show how we've applied it there. And the results are extraordinary. We're also now involved in the global movement towards sustainability. And that is the most complex uh, problem right now that we're facing on the planet. And, uh, you know, the scientists are telling us that it's the most serious situation ever faced by the human race. So there are the books that will help you understand all of this, uh, the Holodynamics and the Dance of Life. Holodynamics is the original work of how we discovered all this, and it was published in 1990. But then came the Dance of Life, and it's about how you use this information to observe nature and see the consciousness of nature and, you know, artificial intelligence, which is really manufactured intelligence. And then goes into different aspects of this, including how we've applied it, like in the War on Terror. And then we go into things like the holodynamic state of being, how you get there, what this information does to you personally, and then into presence in a conscious universe where you learn to access your holodynes and transform them and move them into your relationships with other people. You eventually get into Manual 3, which is about transforming collective consciousness, and we have processes for this. So we get to the point where we can do the reliving, where we step out of time, go back, and transform the past. And then we go into the future and bring it into the present. So it's about integrating the past and the future with the now. And that's field shifting. It shifts the whole field. Very successful at doing this. So any problem we're facing is actually caused by its solution. And we're showing you how to do this and then how to team up and, you know, basically create new systems that transform everything. And the fifth manual is about the dance of life itself. We have courses, we have programs, we have projects. And it's how to use a holodynamic perspective to be able to transform whatever needs to be transformed to improve the quality of consciousness. It's all about psychotherapy. So we're in the middle of information networks, this whole field of consciousness, everything, all matter and life forms are made of information networks. And they're all dynamic. And they're all interconnected in multiple dimensions. This means that everything and everyone and every when are dynamic information networks that are intimately interwoven into the fabric of time and space. It is time and space. Everything is conscious and consciousness is multidimensional. And time is a measurement of how rapidly or the rate at which this consciousness is emerging here. That's Thomas Campbell's book. You can find it there. My big toe, my big theory of everything. We live in an intelligent, self-organizing universe. When you get into my big toe and Thomas Campbell's work and the others, there's a whole body of physics on this. You'll find that this is a field of unified consciousness and it's evolving and it's balancing. And everything indicates that. We are causal, we're part of it. Now, this Nassim Harriman's paper last year was the best science paper of the year has won that award. And he has a fractal scaling proposal where he shows that the size of everything, if you look at this chart up here in the right-hand corner, is the super-sized things like super clusters of galaxies. 
and you move down through to our galaxy and to our solar system and then to our Earth and then to the life forms on the Earth and then to the smallest things here like maybe a hydrogen atom. And he looks at the mass and the scale, the size of things, and he shows the mass inside the black hole inside a hydrogen atom on this model has enough energy and mass to recreate the entire universe. Now that sounds like a preposterous thing to most people, but for Nassim's model, it's totally consistent with how everything has been organized. Even our, our galaxy has a black hole in the center of it. And when you take this model, which is called the fractal scaling laws, then you can see everything fits. And in my big toe, this is what they're talking, this is about Nassim's big toe, his big theory of everything. And you'll notice that one thing, if you come down the center line and look over to the left at the very bottom, there's a little dot there that's talking about modern science. And the seems claim is that modern science has become a religion where they're only worshiping or believing in their belief system about what's real. And it's 10 to the 39th power off base. Why is that important? Because a lot of the things we're doing in psychotherapy are based on that law or that group or that belief system that's perpetuated by science, and it's 10 to the 39th power off on some things. So we have to be careful about our own psychotherapy approach, our belief system about our belief system about what's real. Because our belief system may say this is real and then it's not working in psychotherapy. And the reason it wouldn't be working is because the coded patterns within the information spinners that are emanating from hyperspace are described as fractal scaling patterns and our belief about them, or our belief about what's real may be off and therefore our therapy, our psychotherapy may be off. If you take a look at fractal patterning, you can take random numbers, which is basically chaos. And when you put it through a little formula, n plus n squared, which is the number plus the number squared, and you run it through your computer, you get amazing patterns that is coded even within chaos are some of the most beautiful patterns anywhere and they show up in nature all the time. So we're all individuated beings. A unified field of consciousness individuates into diverse fractal forms. It is this interaction of these diversities that increases the quality of consciousness of the entire field of consciousness. Life and everything in this field is evolving. It's interacting. It's all individuation. But we are part of a great conversation that's going on all the time in multiple dimensions. The question becomes, can you hear this conversation? Can you sense it when you walk into the woods or when you look at an animal or you look at each other? What do you see? What do you hear? Can you hear the great conversation going on? Can you see the beauty in it all? Can you see the fractal patterns in it? Can you see the holodynes that are there? Can you see the sensory perception processes? And can you see that you can only see what you've been taught to see? Your holodynes are controlling the way you see things. They control your screens. They're covering all your senses. You hear only what you want to hear. But there's a non-local reality. This is the R factor. Every point in space and time in the universe has access to the information at any other point in space and time. It's hyperspatial. And there's prima facie evidence that your thinking, your own consciousness, is intimately interwoven with what's happening in reality. Holographic lens says, we look through it as a holographic lens, pattern is anything in formation. Anything that has pattern is made of information. Your senses are covered with holographic screens. Your senses are covered with fine grain and gross grain screens, and your holodynes adjust these screens. Your gross grain screens take in the whole part, and fine grain screens take in the details. I would love to talk about this with you and show you how it works, but you can find it. It's all in the books. The central nervous system integrates these two systems into holographic images and stores them in the microtubule cells as holodynes. This is with all life forms. They all work the same. It's all about self-creation. It begins with your hyperspatial counterpart, your full potential self. It gets with your holodynes, goes right down into it, resonates with all the frequencies. And then this extends to your body, your relationships, your systems, your principles, right into the universe. The whole thing is autopoietic.
negotiating self-interest. From hyperspace to the quantum field to the holodynes, the microtubules to the neurons, from there to the body organs, the body, the personality, relationships, profession, it's all about self-negotiated interest. It's multiple dimensions, physical world, your personal world, your professional world, the environment. You can't leave anything out because it's all connected. Everything has potential. You can get this from David Bohm's book and so forth. It's all through physics. Nature has potential, person, family, company, the country, even the planet. If you want to look at it in more detail, you can see quantum frequencies going through. These are your microtubules here, these tubes. They're joined by the little maps, microtubules associated protein strings, and they're resonating with frequencies that are quantum. The white area, which is the quantum field, is actually what gives you information from hyperspace and also information from other beings here. It all interacts in quantum frequencies and it all grows and holds itself in place. If you look at it from just a cross-section, if you cut a microtubule, you can see that it's full of water. It has a kind of portal into hyperspace that's a quantum field right in the middle of the microtubules in between the frequencies. The holodynes are the turquoise things. They, we built the first, you know, virtual reality microtubule and fed information into it in Russia. And we found out the information actually comes from the portal in hyperspace and spins out into more and more complex forms until it attaches itself to the inner part of the holodyne, which is made of dimer switches here, these little circles. They're all five nanometers across, very small stuff here. But the holodynes are stored there. And then when you are signaled from your environment or hyperspace, your holodynes activate everything. They're, the dimer switches are all valence. They hold the whole thing in place. It's an amazing system. It's computerized, so to speak, only much more complex. And all living things have hollow microtubules and all living things are connected. Now this is quite a perspective, but the science is all there. And so is the science of psychotherapy. So you have unity in a unified field, and all of a sudden you go into individuation, and so the field takes all these individuated forms. And of course, as soon as that's done, then the self-interest creates tension and conflict. So they get, you know, like confronting each other over food or whatever else they need to in the environment, and then the tension becomes negotiated. And as you negotiate, the more you negotiate, then you become compromised, and, and you just become a resolution, and then you get into another whole new level cooperation, and out of that cooperation comes a new level of unity. This is an ongoing process and has been going on for millions of years, long before we got here. But once we've come here, we're coming through, if you look at it through the holographic lens again, humans are reflections of a more complex reality. And I like this because here's you know an angelic being of light, and lots of people find out that's who they really are. And they have all these qualities and characteristics that are manifesting here. But it's only a part of a symbiotic nature that we have. We have five trillion life forms in our body. They all get along, and so they all communicate well. And when you want to lift your right hand, you can lift your right hand and not your left leg. So it's all perfectly correlated according to frolic frequencies. They're 10 to, the to minus 33 per second. Very small frequencies with a very long wave. It can last 100 years. And all of our thought forms and everything that are feeding in through our senses and through hyperspace are coded there on those frolic frequencies. Like a television set, it has its tags, and the, when you turn the TV on, it picks up the tags and creates the pictures. And so likewise, our thought forms are made of different information sets, all of things, and they all work in symbiosis. Even our pathologies are part of this system. So then what, what do we do with all that? Well, we're a young species. Like young species take maximum resources, they hog territory, they multiply widely, wildly and they are all highly competitive. And that's what we are. But we're growing out of that. We're going through this great transition. We're becoming a mature species. And mature species share resources, share territory. They help ensure the life of other species. And they're far more cooperative. They generate far better results. And we do that in lots of ways. But when it comes to the psychotherapy part, if any person, Einstein says, could learn to focus the entire energy of his mind upon a given problem for three minutes, not only would he solve the problem, but he would be considered a genius. And he also said you can't solve the problem from the same framework that created the problem. 
You have to become multiple dimension to do that. You must potentialize it. So we worked out this potentializing process and we tested it as working in all kinds of areas. You just focus on the potential. You check it all through the mind model to make sure you're getting all the dimensions involved. And then you empower your full potential to get you to cooperate, make sure you, your full potential wants you to do this and you work it out together. Then you align with other people in, of like mind. You align with the systems that you need to get your resources and all that and to make it happen. And then you keep your principles. You have to be fair and caring and sharing and good for everybody. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And of course, you universalize it to make sure it works for the whole universe. All these are found in the books. And look who's done it before us. All the cells are symbiotic. Like these are radiolarians. Look at the designs in the radiolarians. These are more complex than any buildings we've ever built, and yet these are done by bacteria. And then, of course, there are other living systems. Did you know that relationships are actually controlled by an information system? We call it the being of togetherness. The being of togetherness or the bot. The guys like to call it the bot. But basically, it's the entity that controls your relationship. It's, we've got a built-in order. It grows. It can be accessed and you can potentialize it. It's the key to marriage and family therapy. It's also the key to systems therapy. It's a being of system synergy. The boss, we call it. It has a pattern of development and built-in order. It can be accessed and potentialized. And the good news is, all over the world, people are potentializing everywhere, every culture. It's an amazing transition we're going through. It's the greatest era of growth in human history. And remember, this is just Henry Staff's words, consciousness has real effects on our world. And values are a central aspect of consciousness. What we value and what we're conscious and think about is what happens. So, can you explain how Bakarovsky was able to heal a dying raspberry by projecting onto it a holographic image of a healthy raspberry? Would the same process work with humans? It does. The healthy raspberry for humans is their full potential self. It's all outlined here in the Therapy Manifesto. It's got 95 treaties, and we've only covered a few of them. And the others are just as profound, and they're amplified by books like this, Dance of Life. And it's, the Dance of Life is accompanied by five manuals. So one is, manual one is the holographic or holodynamic state of being. That's your full potential and how to find it and what the science is and all that kind of thing. And then it gets into the manual two is about holodynes and how to go into the hidden orders and transform. It's like the tracking process for transforming holodynes. And it gets into next then relationships, how to transform your relationships. And manual three takes you from relationships right into field dynamics. And this is where you can step out of time and using your full potential self, access the past, transform the holodynes of the past and free yourself from all those old habits, those patterns, those pathological behavior patterns. And then of course we take you into holodynamic leadership and team building and how to create teams that are healthy and how they can unfold their potential in the field of potential. And then there's the holodynamics manual five about the whole dance of life and how you can go into the stories and metaphors, and transformation processes that hold the entire culture together. And so you can get into different books, and the Wallace Manifesto and Elves and all that kind of thing. And I want to give thanks to people like Elizabeth Satoris for her wonderful books on the evolutionary biology of life. And also these people like the Stephen Hawking and Kevin Kelly and Guy Murchie and his Seven Mysteries of Life. I mean, that's a book that you can read one paragraph in and think about it for three days. It's absolutely amazing. And then Roger Penrose, Shadows of the Mind, and Holographic Universe by Michael Talbot, and The Undivided Universe by David Bowman, all these kinds of things. They are wonderful people, and they've done wonderful things. And we would like to invite you to explore this. We have books. We have tapes. We have videos, we have papers, we have news, we have programs and classes and services. So thank you for uh, allowing me to present some of this as an introduction and my love to all of you. And uh, welcome to the greatest game on earth. This is Vern Wolf from the International Academy of Holodynamics.